A guide is presented to help you build a functional ham radio station with a limited budget. You will learn how to choose the right equipment, build antennas and set up your station for successful communication. In this era of multiple modern communication modalities, the thrill of ham radio is of communication without the internet and cellular network. Imagine that you are in a remote area without cell phone coverage. If you have a portable ham radio setup, you can still contact your friends around the world with similar setup. That is how ham radio or amateur radio has been deployed in natural calamities also when the conventional communication networks are down. Unlike other hobbies, amateur radio needs a license in the country in which you are operating from. That is needed for multiple reasons including security concerns and need to avoid interference with other radio services. Radio amateurs are required to appear for an examination generally involving electronics, radio communication and radio regulations. Each country has its own norms for the examination. In India, one has to apply through the Saral Sancha portal for the examination and for license after passing the examination. Once you have an operating license, you can either purchase necessary equipment or think of making them on your own, either fully or using kits available from various sources. As expected, purchase of commercial equipment is likely to be expensive and making fully on your own needs a lot of skill. The intermediate option is chosen by most new radio amateurs, building your setup using kits. I had built a low power VU to VW and QRP long back and later a 120 watts 3 into 807 vacuum tube QRO for AM and CW. There were no kits in those days and it was building from scratch. I have no experience of building SSB radios or kits on my own. One of the most popular ways to get a high frequency or HF radio built in my region is using Microbitex kits. There are few versions available from two vendors. Latest version of Microbitex is version 6 from HS Signals. Kits are also distributed to members of the Lamarckan Amateur Radio Society during their annual meetings held on second weekend of December every year. Payment is online and needs to be done when you register for the meeting. Kits can be built at the venue during workshops. A more advanced version SBTEX with much more facilities is also the Microbitex is a multiband SSP transceiver with higher power output on lower bands and lower output on higher bands. Power rating is given as 10 watts on lower bands and 5 watts on 28 MHz for Microbitex version 6. As a disclaimer, I am in no way connected with the suppliers nor have I used one. For those who wish to have a little more power, an option is HF Broadband Linear Amp Whiskey Alpha 2 Echo Bravo Yankee available from Victor Uniform 3 Sierra Uniform Alpha. Power rating is given as 35 to 40 watts on 40 meter and 20 to 15 watts on 10 meter band. Another linear amplifier for 40 meter alone suitable for Microbitex being used by many in this region is a 100 watts linear amplifier by VU2 EVQ. Unfortunately, that is out of production, though I heard that the PCBs are still available on request. I was told that most of the components required are locally available, except for the toroids, which need to be procured from elsewhere. Of course, building the linear amplifier needs a bit of skill and some support from other users who have built it. In case of Bitex, there is a very active email group at groups.io involving hams from multiple countries in which 
I also participate as a learner. Once you have a transceiver ready, next is to put up an antenna. Simplest antenna which most of us started off and still continue to use is an inverted V dipole antenna which needs only a single high mast. Each side of the antenna is made of copper wire measuring quarter wavelength meaning about 10 meter for popular 40 meter band. You could add elements for additional bands in the form of a fan dipole. Most of us use 50 ohms coaxial cable to connect the antenna to the radio. Ideally you need a 1 is to 1 current ballon at feed point though many of us have operated without ballon as well. If you have option for two high supports a horizontal dipole antenna can also be used. An SWR meter is desirable to measure the SWR when the radio is connected to the antenna with the coaxial cable to avoid mismatch causing damage to your radio. If the SWR is seen to be high, antenna length has to be adjusted to get the minimum SWR. Though the ideal SWR is 1 is to 1, you may cautiously operate in lower power even up to an SWR of 2 for short periods and for longer periods with SWR 1.5. Length of the antenna element can be adjusted by folding back the ends equally on both ends in small increments and checking the SWR. Once the length is finalized, you can trim off the excess length as well. Sometimes you may need to lengthen. That is why we always cut the antenna elements a little longer than needed and come down as reducing length is easier than increasing length of elements. If you have an antenna tuner, it will take care of mild mismatches easily and you can work more confidently though the tuner will add to your budget. This clip shows the built-in automatic antenna tuner in my FT710 in action with high SWR indications in the process. Finally, it will settle down to an SWR of 1 is to 1 if the antenna is in the tunable range up to 3 is to 1 SWR. External antenna tuners have a range even up to SWR of 10 and is naturally more expensive. Very often, beginners in amateur radio start off with a handheld VHF radio. That is because they are now available at low cost and in many regions, the lowest class of license permits use of VHF equipment with low power. As there are VHF repeaters to enhance the range of handheld devices, they are able to communicate significant distance of the order of a few hundred kilometers if they are located near a repeater with high range of communication. For example, VO2 MJJ repeater which is accessible with a handy in my region has a range of around 200 km radius. VHF equipment are difficult to make on your own and it is easier to purchase a low cost one. If you have a higher budget, you can go for commercial HF radios and VHF VHF base stations which will increase the range of communications. Higher power linear amplifiers are also being used by many up to the legal limit in the region. Yagi antennas can be used with HF radio to give directional gain. They can be made on your own with aluminum pipes as per design or purchase from vendors. VHF UHF Yagi antennas can also be made or purchased. Directional antennas naturally need antenna rotators for communication in multiple directions. Vertical antennas are also there for VHF UHF of which ground plane vertical, slim gym and J-Pole are the most popular ones for home brewing. Commercial dual band high gain vertical antennas 
are also available if you wish to buy one. There are several group purchase options for new equipment where you get to negotiate the price. Groups also facilitate purchase of refurbished or second hand equipment. Though that could be a good deal, one has to be diligent in choosing a good working equipment from a reliable source. Service facility for the equipment in your region has also to be thought of. Groups are also useful for purchasing accessories like antenna connectors and cables. 